Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, he was put in charge of the soldiers, of the Muslim soldiers in the east to take on the Persian army. And this was un during the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. However, there was an increasing threat posed by the Roman soldiers in Yarmouk, Jordan. And therefore, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq instructed Khalid bin Walid to go over to Yarmouk and assume the leadership of the soldiers there. At the point of time, Yarmouk was under the leadership of Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah. Now, Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah, who is the focal point of our video today, he willingly let Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid assume the leadership. And so, the battle against the Roman soldiers, in the which is known as the Battle of Yarmouk, it happened. In the midst of this uh, heated battle, a messenger came from Medina to pass a letter specifically for Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah. And Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah, when he received the letter from the messenger, he was notified of the death of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. And the rule of the Muslim world now has been handed over to uh, uh, Sayyidina Umar bin Al-Khattab. And the first thing that Sayyidina Umar bin Al-Khattab did was to give the rule of Yarmouk, the leadership of the, Yar of the, of the Muslim soldiers in Yarmouk to Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah. Which means therefore that he is to assume the leadership and Khalid was to step down. But this was in the middle of battle. And Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah he instead told the messenger to keep the message to himself and let Khalid continue to lead. Only after the battle was over and the Muslims have achieved victory was Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah bin Al-Jarrah able to tell Khalid bin Walid about the change in leadership. And Sayyidina Khalid was bewildered. He asked, why didn't you tell me in the middle of the battle? I wouldn't have minded. But Sayyidina Abu, Abu Ubaidah al-Jarrah says, I didn't want you to be confused because you are leading a battle and you have to deal with this news coming in. And after all, we are not here for worldly matters. We are brothers. So this last word, we are brothers. In this world that we live in today, sometimes our enthusiasm, our zeal for our opinions and ideas to be exalted, to be championed, all right, comes, to a, comes to a point whereby we actually overlook or we severe our ties of kinship with our brothers. So we rather have a victory of our ideas and opinions over our relationship with our Muslim brothers. And as a result of that, our society has been divided on many fronts. The Muslim world is divided on many fronts because of these divisions, because of our inability to be humble and to accept or to privilege our ties of brotherhood over our opinions, over our ideas. It is about time that we start to be humble, to lower our egos and make the unity of the Ummah, to make the welfare of the Ummah our main agenda, our main idea, our main pursuit. And then we can start to resolve issues such as poverty, issues such as unemployment, issues such as morality and make our Ummah a better community today.